We are live on Facebook. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Amen. Good evening. This is Pastor Stan joining you for another wonderful night this week. Facebook Live, successfully you, discovering your original uniqueness. Amen. Go ahead and tell somebody. Amen. We own Pastor Stan is on. And uh, we're ready to get started, pick up what we left off on last night. And uh, in this very, very powerful and exciting uh, series we're doing on understanding and uh, the journey of discovering your original uniqueness. And, uh, and so we're talking about the path, the path, uh, the, the first part of the path that we must uh, discover, we must understand on this journey of discovering uh, our original uniqueness, discovering who we are originally. And, uh, and so uh, again, I wanna thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, go ahead and tell somebody, go ahead and start your watch party, share, 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 share. Listen, I need y'all to help me get the word out all over this world, all oh, share, 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 share. Listen, this is how God uses you. And uh, when you help me do what I do, you get credit as well, amen. When you when you receive uh, the profit in the name of a profit, amen, you can enjoy the profit reward. And, uh, and by receiving has to do with, you know, you participate, help me get that word out there. And uh, so we can do this. And so i uh, give you a moment or two. And uh, before we do our success for you confession, and I hope you had a, a great evening, a great day today. And uh, listen, if you're listening to me and you're watching me, you had a great day. No matter what went on, no matter what went down, no matter what happened, the fact that you're still here and able to hear me and see me, amen, that's a great thing. Because listen, it's either grace or the grave. Simple as that grace or the grave and notice how they're spelled the same except for one letter the grave is spelled g-r-a-v-e grace is spelled g-r-a-c-e amen simple as that one letter off the whole thing can be, be be a different story amen so i thank god for grace amen because it's grace that's keeping me out the grave Amen. So think about that. Think about that. And uh, so don't don't be so quick to complain and and talk about how bad a day you've had and whatever. Listen, there ain't nobody had everything going their way, and that ain't gonna ever happen where everything gonna go your way. So you don't have to have everything to go your way to have a great day. Amen. You got to decide to make some out of whatever it was. You know, did you make some 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 butter out of it, the milk that was spilled today, or did you make some lemonade out of the lemons today? Uh, whatever, whatever, you know, what, what did you do? Did you make some, some, some uh, fertilizer out of the crap? Amen. That's all fertilizer is, is mixing up the crap. And so you can grow some crop. You see what I'm saying? And so if you had a lot of mess you experienced today, turn it into fertilizer and then let it, listen, listen let it fertilize your life because what the enemy meant for evil, God means it for your good and turn it. But you got to understand that you got to live that way. And, uh, and so, uh, I have a great day every day. Again, don't mean everything go go well, but the fact that I'm here to tell you that, that's a great day, amen. So I thank God that I made it through whatever I made it through today. Let me to tell you, I've had a great day today. And uh, again, that's by faith. You don't go by experience. You don't go by experience. So I'm teaching you something even before we get into our lesson tonight. So anyway, so I'm gonna share my screen. I'm assuming y'all ready to go. And uh, cause I need all my time and I try not to keep you here too long and whatnot so let me go ahead and share my screen and we're going to do our successful you confession and then we're going to move forward in our teaching tonight and uh and so let's see here all right all right all right all right so you got it here on your screen here and listen some of you are probably wondering you know why, why pastor why do you do this every time well if you don't remember amen i do it because of the law of the mind the mind listen in order for that mind to change and get on uh, whatever track you want it on, you've got to repeat and meditate on it day and night as often as you possibly can. That's why I do this. And uh, because I wanted your mind to be imprinted. And uh, and then not only that, the Bible said our tongue is like an ink pen. David said it in the Psalm. He said, my tongue is as as a, is, is, is like a ready writer of an ink pen. And uh, so every time you confess and you say, you actually doing something in your mind it's like you're writing it on your mind that's why confession is so very powerful because what did god say in the word concerning our tongue life and death is in the power of the tongue so why not write the truth on your mind even if your life is not experiencing it amen that's why i say everybody has a prophetic a prophetic component 
of the life. And that's your tongue. And uh, listen, stop looking for somebody else to speak over your life when you don't speak over your life, goodness. So let's start off by doing that, okay? And uh, so here we go. I am treasured, highly treasured and favored of God. I have a healthy respect for myself. I am a spirit being possessing a mind and living in a healthy human body. I am blessed with the seed of greatness and God's character and ability lives within me, causing me to excel in every area of my life. Through the power of love and forgiveness, I am freed from all emotional hurt, fantasies, fear, and strife, which will no longer rob me of my happiness and forward progress in life. Therefore, I take full responsibility for who I am and what I shall become. Upon the principles and wisdom of life will I meditate day and night. My thought life is being renewed and my true purpose for living is being revealed. On this day, you know what day it is, September 23rd, and forevermore, I declare that I am whole, I am fulfilled, I am happy, I am successful in me. Amen. You got to use that tongue aright and speak over yourself. Speak life over yourself. And uh, you got to understand that, and that. And that's why we do that. So I'm teaching you how to prophesy to yourself and prophesy over your life. Speak over your life. You know, and uh, the prophets only exist to remind us who we are and to confirm who we are and what is ours. And uh, so listen, you ought to be a prophet in your own life, first and foremost. Yes, you know, I'm a prophet to you, you know, whatever, but I'm not to be the, the prophet in your life. Nobody is to be the prophet in your life, amen, uh, above you, and that being Jesus Christ as well. So, all right, with that being said, let's get started. So I want you to turn in your Bibles in Romans chapter 8. It's where we, where we spent, uh, uh, I think, the last part of our, our time in Romans chapter 8, we looked at verses number uh, 14 and 15 and 16. And, uh, and so we're talking about uh, the path to the journey of discovering your original uniqueness. The path of the, to the journey of discovering your original uniqueness. And we said, we start off saying three, so we got about four or five things, four key things that you got to understand on this journey. And so right now we're on number two. So the, the first thing we said was, you've got to understand that you're dealing with two natures. Every, every person is dealing with two natures, okay? You know, and what, what's the natures? There you go. The nature of God and the nature of sin. Where is the nature of God? There you go, in you. The nature of sin, where is that? In your flesh, amen. Is your flesh you? No. Is your, are you your flesh? No, simple as that. And so we know how to keep those two separate and understand that there's two different nature, one nature at work in you, and there's another nature at work in your flesh. And you understand that, and then you know how to navigate your life and how to manage your life. And because you're consciously and constantly aware of which nature you're drawn out of. But, but also you need to understand, you need to deposit uh, you know, into your life uh, as well. And so we said the second thing we got to get. So the first thing you got to understand is that you have two nations to contend with every day that you got to decide between every day. Number two, you need to know the differences between those two natures. And we're on the difference almost at the end of those differences. And we've got to number seven so far. And uh, so I'm just going to repeat one through seven, and then we're going to start on number eight. And uh, we probably spend all of our time on number eight because it's loaded. It's powerful. And uh, so number seven, number eight go together. So the first thing we say, the first differences between the nature of God and the nature of sin in your flesh, the nature of God in you and the nature of sin in your flesh is the nature of God focused on the image of God in you. The nature of sin focused on the insecurity of guilt in your flesh. Again, the nature of God focused on the image of God in you whereby the nature of sin focuses on the insecurity of guilt in your flesh. Number two, the nature of God strengthens you and your mind. The nature of sin weakens your body, you, and your mind. See, the nature of sin seeks to weak every part of you. All right? That's number two. Number three, 
The third difference is the nature of God fulfills the purpose of God in your life and through your life. Where the nature of sin fulfills, watch this, it fulfills the pleasures of the body through your life. See, the nature of God, number three, uses your life to fulfill his purpose for your life, where the nature of sin uses your life to fulfill the pleasures of the body. And so you got to understand that. So if you're given to fulfilling the pleasures of your body, then you're working against fulfilling the purpose of your life. When you understand this, it makes it easier to you to make decisions and empowers you to make right decisions that, listen, if I fulfill this desire that I'm feeling, will it hinder me fulfilling my purpose? If so, then you don't fulfill that desire. Don't yield to that desire. You've got to ask these questions. You know, I got another series I do called, is it preference or is it purpose? Is it my preference or is it my purpose? Because every time you make a decision, you're either fulfilling your preference or your purpose. And that's what this, this third difference is about, that am I fulfilling my preferences, which is the pleasure of the body, or my purpose, which pleases God? Number four, the fourth difference between the nature of God and the nature of sin is this. The nature of God manifests the fruits of the spirit. Well, the nature of sin manifests the fruits of the flesh. And you can go back in Romans and Galatians, look at all different fruits. We're not going to talk about all those fruits because of the whole list of them. So you, you, that's how you can tell whether you're in the flesh, in the spirit. If you see these fruits, then you're in this flesh. If you see these fruits, then you're in the spirit. Simple as that. You know, you, you ain't got to pray about it, fast about it. Just pay attention. Amen. All right. All right. So the fifth difference between the nature of God, and the nature of sin is this. The nature of God satisfies the spirit of God. Well, by the nature of sin, satisfy the spirit of Satan. See, Satan injected his spirit into the nature of the flesh, and it's called sin. See, sin is simply satanic in nature. It's satanic spirit in nature. That's all sin is, S-I-N, satanic, I-N, in nature. Sin is just simply satanic in nature. So write that down so you remember that sin. That is satanic in the nature of your flesh. You see? And sin also stands for selfish in nature. Selfish, S-N-I-N, nature. Selfish in nature. Sin is selfish in nature. Simple as that. Okay, those are just simple acronyms that I use to, to remind me, you know, and to remember sin. Simple as that. It, it, just, it ain't that difficult. All right. And uh, and so that's that's number five. Number six, the sixth difference between the nature of God and the nature of, of sin is this. The nature of God frees and blesses you, whereby the nature of sin enslaves and curses you. Again, the sixth difference between the nature of God and the nature of sin is the nature of God frees and blesses you whereby the nature of sin enslaves and curses you. And now you're going to see this even more when we get into number uh, number number eight. Number eight, seven, eight. So the seventh thing we said was the nature of God, seventh difference between the, the nature of God and nature of sin is the nature of God opposes the desires of your flesh. And the nature of sin opposes the desires of the spirit. And, uh, and let's read again. Let, let's, let's read in uh, verse number, um, let's see here. Uh, Galatians, yeah, that was in Galatians. I'm just going to read real quickly, and uh, because this is worth repeating, and, and you being reminded of this as often as possible. You, you, you want to get this, and you want to be uh, constantly aware of this, so you can understand what you are doing to yourself when you obey the spirit, when you yield to the nature of, of God versus when you near, yield to the nature of sin. That whenever you yield to the nature of sin, you're doing something against the nature of God and yourself. And when you yield to the nature of God, you're doing something against the nature of sin and for yourself. Okay? I'm going to say it again. When you yield to the nature of sin, you're doing something against God and yourself. When you yield to the nature of God, you're doing something against the nature of sin, but for yourself. 
Okay, let's read it. He says, verse number 16 and 17, for this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Remember that? If I walk in the spirit, I automatically not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So I don't have to focus on not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. So what should I focus on? You got it. Focus on walking in the spirit and my focus on walking in the spirit automatically prevents me from fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Simple as that. Man, that's life changing right there. If you get nothing else out of the teaching, you got to get that piece and take that to the bank. Watch this. Then he says this, verse number 17, for the flesh, I'm going to read in the, in, the, in the Amplified Version. It says, for the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are opposed to the flesh, the godless human nature. For these are antagonistic to each other, continually withstanding and in conflict with each other. Why? So that you are not free, but are prevented from doing what you would. See? That the, fl the flesh prevents you from obeying God, prevents you from doing what you want to do to obey God, but then the spirit prevents you from obeying the flesh. See, they oppose each other. So watch this. So if I walk in the spirit, then the spirit will oppose my flesh. I don't have to. Because as I walk in the spirit, the spirit opposes my flesh. See? Think about it. But if I walk in the flesh, I automatically oppose the spirit because the spirit will the, the, the flesh will oppose the spirit. See, and so what we learn is this: that when I yield to the flesh, I'm really living in opposition of myself. So you, you're praying and you're fasting that the will of God be done in your life, but the Lord said every time you walk in the flesh, you oppose the will of God. So that means every time you take a step forward. And then the next step you take in the flesh, you just take a step backward. And you find yourself going around in circles instead of what we said, instead of cycling. I'm not going to go with that again, but I just want to mention it. You see, you got to understand that. You see, so stop working against yourself. That's why the enemy don't have to come against us. The devil don't have to oppose you. Why? Because if you walk in the flesh, you automatically oppose yourself. So wherever you and I have ever failed, it was not because of a demon or a devil. It was because of a decision. Let me say it again. Wherever you and I have failed in life, it is not because of a demon or a devil. It's because of your decision. See, that's the D word. Not devil, not demon, but decision. Everybody say, my decision have got me where I'm at. And so watch this. Whenever you've succeeded in something, it was your decision that propelled you into success in that. Why? Because when you decide to obey the Holy Spirit, that's what it leads to, success. So that leads me to number eight. And oh my God, this is powerful here. This is powerful. And I'm going to show you a lot of things about this. Number eight. So we say number seven is that the different is the, the nature of God opposes the, the nature of sin. And the nature of sin opposes the nature of God. So the nature of sin opposes God's will for your life. And the nature of God opposes Satan's will for your life. Okay. Number eight. I know you've been waiting on it. Here we are. Number eight. The eighth difference between the nature of God and the nature of sin is this. The nature of God produces success and prosperity in and through your life. I'm going to say it again. The nature of God produces the success and prosperity in and through your life, whereby the nature of sin produces. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you got it. It produces struggle and poverty in and through your life. So here it is. When I obey the nature of God that's in me, on this side, the nature of God in me, watch this. That means I live in agreement 
and an approval with the Holy Spirit for success and prosperity in my life. When I yield to the flesh, that means I agree and approve struggle and poverty in my life. Wow. Because remember, the nature of God produces success and prosperity. Where the nature of sin produces struggle and poverty. You don't believe me? Let me read a scripture to you. And then I'm going to take you and show you how in the beginning this was true. And it's still true today. So let's look at, um, 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 let's see here. Romans chapter 8. Go to Romans chapter 8. Go back to Romans chapter 8. Okay. I'm going to read uh, one verse there. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse number 6. It says, for to be carnally minded. Now you got to understand that carnally minded means a mind that is governed by the flesh. I'm going to get into the details about this later, but I, you need to understand that. See, so, so another way of saying be, to be carnally minded means is when your mind is given and yielded to the nature of sin, it produces death. And I'm going to show you the first thing that death produced in the life of mankind was struggle and poverty. That struggle and poverty are fruits of death. Whereby success and prosperity are fruits of life. See, you don't have to preach, you don't have to preach success and prosperity to have it. All you got to do is preach life. And life produces success and prosperity. Mm. Listen, you don't have to preach struggle and poverty. All you got to do is get people to live in sin, and sin will produce poverty and struggle. This is why this is so important to you to understand this, that whenever I yield to the spirit of God, I yield to the nature of God, I'm actually living in agreement with the spirit of success and prosperity in my life. But when I yield to the nature of sin in my flesh, when I yield to my flesh, I'm actually agreeing and approving struggle and poverty in my life. Which means now I'm living in disagreement with success and prosperity. Though I want success and prosperity, but because I yielded to my flesh, I'm actually in agreement with struggle and poverty. Ooh. My, 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 my. So you got to understand what you're doing when you're doing what you're doing. You've got to understand what you activate behind the scene when you take actions according to your flesh or actions according to the spirit, your faith. See, there ain't no such thing as nothing is happening. Something is always happening. Every decision that I make, I'm either activating struggle and power and poverty or success and prosperity. Now, every one of us wants success and prosperity, but not all of us have the confidence and the courage and the mindset to activate that. So you know what you do? You pray for it. So let me tell you this. God never intended, please hear me. Please hear me. And I'm, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. But I'm going to say it to you first. God never intended and it does not happen. God never intended for us to pray for success and prosperity. Mm -hmm. You know why we pray for success and prosperity? Because we don't know how to trigger success and prosperity. So we just pray. Ask God to do it for us. Well, let me tell you something. Prosperity and success in your life it's not up to God. It's up to you. Woo, 
my God, I, my, 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 my. I told you we're gonna spend the rest of our time on number eight tonight. We ain't we gonna get nowhere because I already, I already some stuff already coming up. I've got some other scripture I'm gonna show you that I wasn't planning to show you, but the Holy Spirit just brought them to me. I'm gonna show you. See, watch this. Poverty and struggle is not in the devil's hand. It's in your hand. Success and pro prosperity is not in God's hand. It's in your hand. And let me tell you this, your success and prosperity is not in another person's hand. Your struggle and your poverty in your life did not come from nobody else. It, either one, whichever one you got, it came from you. See, the success in my life is in my hand, not yours. See, so you gotta stop thinking that if you don't have certain people in your life, and so many people in your life, you're gonna fail. That's a lie from hell. That if I learn to be successful in who I am, I will succeed in everything that I do. If every one of you around me today, leave me and stop supporting me, stop watching, never give another dime to a minutes, let me tell you something, I will never fail. You know why? Because my success, just like your success, does not depend upon another person. I thank you for what you do, but don't you dare think that God only have you as an option. And don't you ever think that you are the only option that people have. You are fooling yourself. See, your success does not depend upon me. Nobody's success depends upon me. Only my children to a certain extent, and then I, it, I turn it over to them. See, and then it's on them. So they fail. It's because of the decision they made. They didn't use everything I gave them or they didn't add to what I gave them. See, your prosperity and success is in your hand. Just like struggle and poverty is in your hand, not the devil. Stop blaming the devil for what you didn't do or for what you did. See, now you may not have meant that. Let me tell you something. Life don't go by intentions. Life goes by action, decision no matter what you intended. Success and prosperity don't come just by intentions. It comes by your actions, what you do, see? Some of y'all became successful at something you didn't intend to, why? Because you did something that created success, it happened. It, it doesn't matter what your intentions are, see? That's why good intention people still fail, why? Because I'm, I'm gonna show you, see what good intentions won't bring you good success. The Bible says a good man out of a good treasure bring forth good fruit. See, we mean you being good ain't good enough. You got to have good treasure. That means the stuff you working with, it says a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bring forth good things. Which means this, a good man got to have a good mind. But did you not know a good man can have a bad mind and therefore produce bad fruit, bring forth bad things? What do you mean by that, Pastor? See, you can be a good-hearted person. I mean, you mean well, but you can be so ignorant about what you need to do. That means the treasures you're working with are not good, which means they won't benefit you. That's what the word good means. They won't benefit and produce for you. And so you could be working with the wrong thing and then you end up with the wrong thing. I don't understand why. See, this is why bad things happen to good people because good people don't do what they should do and they, they create the bad stuff that happened to them. For example, you're a good person, but God sent you wisdom. God sent you instructions through, through other people and through your life, through your prayer life. Of, of, of not to marry this person or not to date this person, not to go to the uh, game with this person, to go somewhere, but you decided to, to, you know, you felt otherwise. I, I didn't see nothing wrong with it. See, and Spirit of God had told you not to go. Spirit of God had told you not to hook up with them. Now you're good people. But because your mind don't listen to God, you get your good little self in trouble. And then what we want to do? Oh, God, help me. The devil, no, 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 the devil didn't do that. You did that. 
Because you wouldn't listen to wisdom. You wouldn't listen to instruction. Why? Because see, you feeling your way through. I, I feel, I feel, I think, I think. Yes, let me tell you something. See, we can be too grown for our own good. I'm grown. Yeah, you grown, but that don't mean you wise. See, who, whoever told you that wisdom comes with age? No. Wisdom automatically come with age. I know a whole lot of old, dumb fools. And you do too. Now, wisdom comes from applying and a, a knowledge. and what, It don't come with age. So you got some wise young people as well as some old fools. You got to understand this. It's in our hand. So the nature of God produces, watch this, success and prosperity in my life and through my life. That the nature of God wants to use my life to produce success and prosperity. When the nature of sin wants to use my life to produce struggle and poverty. Now, let me show y'all, for those of y'all who think your success is not in your hand, turn with me to Joshua. That's the first one I'm going to show you. But then I'm going to go back even further than that and show you that even in the beginning, it says that. So turn me in the book of Joshua. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The book of Joshua. Um, and if you can't find it, don't spend your time. To find it later. Go to the content, write it down, and go back and read it later. Watch this. Watch this. God, God says this. See, Israel didn't understand this. That See, they thought God was preventing them from going to the promised land. No, they were preventing themselves from going to the promised land. Why? Because, see, they were living according to the desires and the lust of their flesh, and they prevented God from fulfilling his promise in their lives. That God promised them success and prosperity, but they never saw it. Why? Because they couldn't get over their own feelings and decisions. So it was even with Moses. When God told Moses, listen, speak to the rock. But Moses got so caught up in his feelings and being angry with the people of God that he disobeyed what God said. And so instead of speaking to the rock, he did what God told him to do the first time. See, the first time God told him to strike the rock. But then the second time, God said, now speak to the rock and water going to come out. But Moses got so caught up in his feelings that he disobeyed God. He made a decision to disobey God and he struck the rock. And God said, oh, really? Oh, I know what I promised. But you just canceled that by your decision, Moses. He said, you and this generation will not cross the Jordan and go into the promised land. Listen to me, people and leaders. There ain't nobody that God's so close to that he'll let you disobey him and still just bless you. No, 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 no. See, you got to understand something. God put blessing and curse in our hands. He's the creator of it. Yes, God's the creator of blessing and curse. You didn't know that, did you? Yeah, so you thought the devil created curse. No, he didn't. God did. Why? God said, I set before you blessing and curse. He didn't say, I set before you blessing and Satan set before you curse. No, 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 no. They're not partners. Why did God create blessing and curse? Why he just didn't create blessing? Because it would make him a liar. Because God said, I'm going to make you like me. I'm going to give you the ability to choose. Well, how can God give you the ability to choose if you don't have a choice? So God had to create the choice. Think about that. And so God said, listen, and then I gave you the authority to choose which one. Which means the blessing don't just happen, nor the curse just happen. You got to choose it. So I want you to say with me, today I choose the blessing. I choose to bless myself. And every day you got to wake up and say, you know, I choose to bless. You ain't got to necessarily say it, but in your thinking and in your actions, you got to choose the blessing. When you don't choose the blessing in your actions and in your thought, you automatically default to the curse. Automatically. There ain't no in between. See, some of y'all religious ways and religious teaching have taught you that. There ain't no in between. He didn't say, I said, so you bless it and curse it and then this may be thing. No, we created that. It's on or off. It's blessing or curse. 
you choose. Let me tell you, that's exciting. Why? Because no one can curse you. No one can bless you like you. My God, my God. This is, this, this, this is why it's so important to learn how to be successful in you because you will learn to walk in these understandings and these truths and then govern your life accordingly. That's why when you understand this, you don't have to beg nobody for nothing. Why? All you got to do is believe. Believe in what's in you and believe in you. Yeah. Now, I know that sounds strange. But no, no, no. You're yeah, not no, no, believing yourself. No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. The Bible says you're not to believe in your flesh. It says put no confidence in your flesh. It never told you don't have no confidence in you. But see, the problem is you always thought your flesh was you and you were your flesh. That's why you never have confidence in you because you don't know who you are. When you learn who you are, you're going to gain a confidence in you that only comes from God. And then you'll stop having confidence in your flesh. I have no confidence in my flesh, nor your flesh. See, I trust you, but I don't trust your flesh. But watch this. But I only trust you to the level that you govern your flesh. So I watch how people govern their flesh. And that's how I trust you, based upon how you govern your flesh. If I see that you make excuses for your flesh, my trust in you is going to be very small. Why? Because if you can't govern your flesh, then I can't either. So I can't trust you. See, that's why it's so very important to govern your flesh, because how you well you govern your flesh proves how much and how well God can trust you. See, it ain't about praying. You pray, oh, God, give me this. God, give me that. God, give me God. God said, why would I give you all of that just for you to waste it? Why? I need you to get, a, get control of your flesh. Stop letting your flesh dictate your life. And then watch this. And the things you're praying for, they'll just come. Why? Because you got to understand something. That when I yield to the nature of God, it automatically produces success and prosperity in my life. Because God... They never told us to pray for us to prosperity and to success. If you pray for prosperity and success, it's because you don't understand how to really generate it. So you got to pray for it. That's wasting your prayer. Now, I know some of y'all have a hard time with that. Well, I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to help you grow up mature in your life. See, because you're wasting your prayer time. You don't pray for success. You obey for success. Because did you not know that Pharaoh did not enter into the earth until somebody disobeyed? Success was in the earth based upon obedience, not prayer. I'm going to show you a scripture. I'm going to show you another one, okay? All right, watch. Watch this. Watch this. Joshua chapter 1. Look at this. Watch this. He says, he's, now, now, now Moses then gone and died, and now Joshua is leading. But watch this. Joshua is taking over from Moses. Why? Because Moses failed in his assignment, and that generation that he led, they didn't make it. And so watch this. So God told, told, told Moses that you and this generation, instead of y'all cycling, y'all going to circle. Because this generation of Israel that came out of Egypt, they was, their mind was so carnal and was so given to their nature of their, of their flesh, man, they, 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 they could obey God longer than a moment. And then when they got the leader to disobey God, it stopped everybody. And so God said, watch this. So now you're going you're gonna to circle in the desert for 40 years. Why? Until I raise up your children. See? I raise up your children, and I'm going to take your children into the promised land. Why? Because they're going to be led by men who are not given to the flesh, but are given to the spirit of God. Watch this. Why? Because Joshua and Caleb, the Bible says, and go to go to Numbers, Numbers 13 and number 14, uh, the book of Numbers, and look at chapter 13, chapter 14. I don't have time to turn there. I'm going to say it to you. Why? Because the Bible said that Joshua and Caleb was of a different spirit. They obeyed the spirit of God. Where Moses and the children of Israel, that, that generation, in that moment, they, they disobeyed the spirit of God, and they got stuck in the wilderness. That Moses died in the wilderness with that generation. Why? Because it said Joshua and Caleb was of a different spirit. 
their mind was geared toward the spirit, which means they didn't go by what they see. They, they, what they saw, they went by what God said. See, the spiritual mind goes by what God says. The carnal mind goes by what you see. Okay? So watch this. So Joshua's now on the scene. So now Joshua's leading. So God's going to remind Joshua of how this work. So look at Joshua chapter, um, chapter 1, verse number 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, unto the land which I do go, which I do give them, give, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. He's reminding Joshua, listen, Joshua, I've already done this. Don't you trip out on me. Let me remind you how this work. He says, that I have given you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall, watch this, he said, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Wow. Joshua, no man will be able to stop you. And listen, and your success will not be dependent upon no man. Only you, Joshua. Are you getting this? Are you getting me tonight? I told you we're not going to get past number eight. We got to come back to number eight again tomorrow. Why? Because I'm going to run out of time here in a minute because this is so loaded. Because I want to show you several scriptures there because I need this to get in your spirit. I need you to get convinced. I need you to get persuaded. Why? Because once you become persuaded in what God says, then you no longer stagger at the promises of God. The reason you are staggering at God's promises in your life because you're not persuaded of what God said concerning your life. The Bible said that about Abraham in Romans chapter 4. It says, when he became persuaded in what God said, he no longer staggered at the promises. See, you stagger, which means one day you're on, one day you're in. One moment you're like, oh, you know, I don't know, you know, but then how you feel and whatever. No, once you get persuaded, you no longer stagger. You no longer stumble. You no longer hit and miss. You're going to become consistent in the promise of God, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation. Why? I'm going to stay consistent because faith in God keeps you consistent. It don't have you up and down and out moody and all that kind of foolishness. See, moody people are kind of minded people. You know what? You know why you're moody? Because your mind is on your flesh too much. And then when you're not being moody, you know why? Because your mind is on the spirit. You, you're in the spirit. See, it's, it's something, stop thinking it's, it's, it's your husband, it's your wife, it's the job. It's, no, 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 no. It's where you put your mind. Now, if you let what your wife do take your mind there, then you move it from there. Don't let it stay there. Because people can't do things to take your mind somewhere, but it's up to you whether or not it stays there or not. So don't blame your moodiness on other people. It's in your hand. Your success and prosperity is in your hand. Or if there's struggle and poverty in your life, it's in your hand. Only you can change it. You can pray all you want to. Struggle and poverty don't leave because of prayer. You know why? Because it didn't come because of prayer. Just like prosperity and success don't come by prayer. And watch this. And there ain't no prayer that anybody can pray that can cause success and prosperity to leave your life. See? Voodoo don't work, but it only works when you believe it, when you give somebody that power. That's all voodoo is. It means you gave somebody the power. Nobody got no power over me. You can sprinkle whatever dust you want to. You can put a doll on the top of my head and burn it. And she, it make no difference why, because I'm blessed. All you do is put a, put a doll, a voodoo doll on top of the blessing. And all you're going to do is melt away and go, why? Because I'm blessed. You got to understand this. Let's finish reading Joshua. Watch this. He said, Joshua. Verse number five, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life, not just on Sunday, not just on Bible study day, not just on Monday, but all the days of your life. Listen, you got to understand this. See, I'm trying to get you into a faith where you start thinking and believing that every day and all day and all the days of your life will be blessed. 
you got to stop thinking it, you know, it can't last, can't no good thing last always. See, you don't, you don't start believing that lie. I'm trying to change that mindset, get you into a mindset. And I'm working on myself as well, that every day, all day I can be blessed. Even when negative things happen, it don't cancel out the blessing. I'm still blessed. I, okay, one negative thing happened, but you forgot about the five positive things that took place. So what the enemy did something, watch this. The Bible said, where sin abound, grace much more abound. So listen, so whatever Satan does, God, God gonna outdo that. Don't worry about what Satan gonna do. Don't worry about that. The Bible said the weapons may form, but they won't prosper. Which means this, if the weapons formed against you and they won't prosper, you know what that means? That means you prosper. God said, watch it. Weapons formed against you don't stop your prosperity. See, you didn't know that, that, that that's what the scripture meant, did you? See, we always talk about, you said the weapons formed against you won't prosper. You know, they, they, you know, they won't prosper. I got you, but you didn't tell the whole story. The reason they won't prosper because you prospered. So that means when, when, when the enemies come against you, that's a sign that you're about to continue to prosper. You're about to prosper. See? But watch this. If they form a weapon against you and you stop prospering, you know why? It's not because the weapon that formed against you. It's because you start believing in the weapon that was formed against you, which means you stopped your own prosperity. You started crying out to God and stopped doing what you're doing. Why? Because somebody came against you. Somebody, somebody said this against you. Somebody did this, whatever. No, 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 no. That's the moment you continue to believe when things come against you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me finish reading the scripture. Y'all y'all, y'all make me take all my time. Watch this. He said, verse number five, that shall not any man be able to stand against you before, before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. What's the qualifier? As long as you, look at the next verse. As long as you be strong and of good courage. Now, he's not talking about you being strong in your might. In your, no, 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 no. He's telling, you, he's telling you as long as you live out of the strength of who you are in him. And be of good courage for unto this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto your, you, your fathers to give them. Only be you strong and very courageous. Meaning, you can be weak and you can be fearful. How? When you're leaning on your flesh, you're going to be weak and full of fear because your flesh is weak and full of fear. But when you're leaning on the nature of God, you're going to be strong and very courageous. That's why this is so very important. Because remember, the nature of sin makes your body fearful. And if your mind listens to your body, then your mind will be full of fear. I done ran out of time. My, my, what a time go when you're having a good time. But let me say this as I prepare to close. That when your mind leans on the nature of God, then you, your mind, and your body will be full of faith. The strength of God. And very courageous. Watch this. He says, only be you strong and very courageous that you may observe to do. Uh-uh. That you may what? Observe to do. He didn't tell him pray. He says, pay attention. Be mindful of what to do. Observe. That means mentally engage. Think this through of what to do. What shall you do, Joshua? Watch this. To do according to all the law or the word of God, which Moses, my servant, commanded you, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. God said, do not turn away from the word, either the right or the left, but stay on it, stay focused on it, stay stuck on the word. Stay stuck on what I said to you. No matter what happens on your right, no matter what happens on your left, I want you to stay forward. Stay focused on my word. 
Why? Because it's your decision to stay on my word that's going to bring you to success and poverty and prosperity. But if you don't, let's read on here. He says, he says, don't turn to the left or to the right that you may prosper whithersoever you go. What? Yeah, he said, if you do this, you will prosper wherever you go. I'm going to stop and leave it right there. I want you to think about that one. See, and I got some other I want to show you. That listen, you got to understand something. That when I lean to the nature of God, I'm leaning into my success and prosperity. When I lean to the nature of sin in my flesh, I'm actually leaning into struggle and poverty. It's your choice. It's my choice. See? So what do you choose to do? It's all God said I set before you. And as I close, we're going to come back and pick right back up here in Joshua tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we're going to pick up in Joshua. But I want you to meditate on this tonight. That as you make a decision every day, even right now, see, whatever decision you make, is it's either cause you to lean into your success and prosperity or to lean into struggle and poverty. See, some of you are leaning into struggle and poverty and you don't even know it. And you call it doing your own thing, but what you don't realize is you're doing the very thing that the enemy wants you to do to create struggle and poverty for yourself. And watch this, the struggle and the poverty that you're creating, it don't always come immediately. It may be years down the road. And you say, how did I end up here? Remember when? When the pastor tried to give you wisdom, tried to tell you, but now you feeling your way through. You listening to somebody, you're not listening to God. You, 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 you lying to God, you disobeying God. And now you got yourself in a mess and you like, like you confused about who did that. You did that. See, I've been there, done that. The way I didn't listen to God and got into a relationship and like, how did I get in this mess? Because God said, you didn't listen to me. See, you lean to your flesh or watch this. You either lean and listen to your flesh or you listen to other people's flesh or in the flesh. Carnal mind of people. And let me tell you something. This is sad to say, but I'll say that, and I'm closing, I promise I'm closing on this. Let me tell you something. There are some carnal-minded preachers that you can't take no advice from. See, why? Because the truth be told, they're not obeying it themselves. I know, I know about that because I've been there, done that. That I took the advice of a carnal-minded pastor about a relationship and got myself in a world of mess. See? I didn't know it at the time. And everything you told me, I thought I was like, really? I'm like, wow. But I figured he's the pastor, you know, you know, he man of God, you know. Listen to me very careful. You better know if you're a man or woman of God or living in the flesh or living in the spirit. You better know. Are they listening to the flesh or they listen to the spirit? You better know. You better pay attention. See, don't just go by what they preach. Because just because they know the Bible and can preach the Bible, let me tell you something. The Bible said that the, the devils know scripture. The devil know that God exists and God went and trembling fear, but they don't stop being the devil. They believe God exists, but that. See, you got to stop by going, no, no, no. The, the, their lies. See? Is their lies riddled with the fruit of the flesh? Not good counsel. I don't care how long they've been preaching. That goes for me or anybody else. I'm not. I'm not throwing no, nothing. Nobody. No preacher. See, and so, so us preachers got to stop thinking we always in the spirit. No, you're not. And you got to acknowledge when you're not and get in. And being in the spirit don't mean you got to be quoting scriptures and you got to be. Uh, you know, you got to be. No, 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 no. Just, you can be in the spirit watching TV. You know, yeah. You see, and uh, stop, stop making this so difficult and so uh, superfluous and so spooky. It ain't that deep. 
Listen, I'm out of town. I, I thank you for I thank you for listening to me, indulge me. You know, I go off on these little tangents sometimes. You know, because listen, because I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help people and uh, and make it as simple and practical as possible. And I want you to read Joshua, and we're gonna come back to the Joshua, and then we're gonna show you some other scriptures that says, "Listen, your success and prosperity is in your hand. Likewise, struggle and poverty is in your hand. Which one do you hold? Which one? See, you, you, you I know you desire success and prosperity." But that may not be really the way you're thinking. So you got to take a look at your actions and see if it lines up with, which means you got to do your homework. And, 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 and you need help doing that. And that's why you need people like myself and others to help you to understand and be able to identify that those are principles of struggle and poverty. And these are principles of success and prosperity. You got to understand something because you can be opposing yourself and working against yourself. But listen, it's time to reverse the curse. And it's time to release the blessing in your life in a manifested form. And that's what I'm here to do. So thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, I pray that the word of God been a blessing to you. And listen, consider becoming a partner with me. I know you, you've, listen, you've been watching me and watching me. Listen, why don't you join me be a partner? Help me do this thing. And let's, we got some exciting things going on. I'm going to be doing some, uh, you know, advancing and expanding our print media. So I'm going to be writing some books and some booklets, whatever. Listen, I need your help to do that. And uh, they cost money. And so, so a seed. And so those are the things you help me do because I want to get some of the stuff that I'm teaching in print. And uh, it's going to already be on audio and DVD, but I want to get it in print, but it costs money to do that. So why don't you consider helping us with, with a seed tonight and be, become a monthly partner with us and say, you know, Pastor Stan, I want to partner with you every month and help you, you know, to write these books and, and these booklets and, and, and notebooks and all kind of stuff so we can get stuff in print because I need the information to get out there to the world. And uh, so God bless you. Thank you. I see you again tomorrow at the same time. Amen. Take care.